Now, if you're not totally up on these, you need to be taking some notes. So all we now know is we know about slope, but how does that relate to perpendicular lines? Well, the great thing about perpendicular lines is, like we said, they intersect at in a 90-degree angle. The great thing about it is they have a unique relationship of their slopes. So the slopes are always related to each other, always. And their slopes are always negative, and this ought to be the negative reciprocal. So if I've got a slope over here, and let's say my slope is 3 fourths, what's the negative reciprocal of that? Negative 4 thirds. Negative 4 thirds. Negative so, wait, 3 fourths equals negative 4 thirds? Sorry. <laughs> becomes if you look at it. So all, all I'm trying to get you guys to realize is that when you get the slope of something and you want to get the slope to the perpendicular line, you flip it and change the signs. That's the common high school term I believe you guys like to use. Flip it and change the sign. But we call that the negative reciprocal. So if we've got, uh, let's say the square root of 3 over 2 Minus, what is the negative reciprocal of that? 2 over the square root of 3. 2 over the square root of 3. Okay, good. And I know we don't like, we don't like square roots in the denominator, but I'm just giving you the general theorem for how to solve these things. Okay? So how does this really help us? Well, when you take a tangent line to a circle, means it only touches at a single point. And we've already dis established that the distance from that point to the center is something we're already familiar with, which is a radius. So in order to find the slope of this line, we need to find the slope of this line. We can do that because we have two known points. We can get the slope formula. And then we have a point and a slope, and we can use the point slope form in order to figure out the equation of that line. All right? Is that, a, is that clear? Does everybody understand? Super. All right, so we already covered that. All right, so and then we know the slope is always going to, of the radius is always going to be the, uh, the negative reciprocal of the tangent line. So how do we find the equation? So here's how we do it. We're going to work a couple of examples today. And uh, as I always like to do, I always like to do a quick sketch of the circle so that the first thing we can do is we can establish by visually looking at the circle and the tangent line, we can actually determine whether the slope's going to be positive or negative, which will actually help us to check our answer, right? So if we take a circle and we've got a point of tangency is up here, and we draw a little sketch like this. What's the slope of the line going to be? Positive or negative? Negative. Anybody? Yes, sir. I just got a question. When we solve these, like, what's going to be good? And I'm going to get to that. That's a good question. Right now, what if you only know the equation of the circle and the point of tangency? So let's take an example. Let's take x squared plus y squared equals 25. So, as we know from the, the formula, which is, who can tell me the formula for the circle? x squared x minus h squared plus y squared. Plus y squared. Good. Equals r squared. So, in this, in this equation, what is h and k, which is the center of our circle? Zero. zero and zero. So we've got a zero and a zero. All right? The, uh, the point that we're going to give you the tangent is going to be 4 minus 3. So our point of tangency here is 4 comma minus 3. You should write not to scale. Would you like me to write not to scale? Yeah, because okay. yeah, that's misleading. Uh, that's not right. But to scale. Actually, is there a scale on here? Yeah, Do you not. see a scale? 
no is, there a, is there it's a Cartesian implied. coordinate which actually gives me a... It's implied, though. It's implied, that's correct. So maybe x is this way. But, uh, you're right. For, for purposes of this, let's go ahead and do it. That's a good point. So here's our Cartesian coordinate. We've got the center at 0, 0. It's about 5, so we'll go out to here. And we've got a point of... 4, negative 3. 4, negative 3. Four, negative three. So it's 4, negative 3. It's going to be about right there. So there's our point of tangency. Is it going to be positive or negative? Positive. positive. That line's positive. Okay, good. So we know we're going to have a positive slope of this line. That's good. So now what we need to do is we need to establish our radius. Mm -hmm. So we, we know what the center is. We know a single point. How do we arrive at the slope for the radius? Use the formula up there. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus So m equals, you guys tell me what I'm going to do. This is going to be point uh, x1, y1, and that's going to be number 2. So it's negative 3 minus 0 over 4 minus 0. Okay, and what does that give us? Negative 3 minus over three 4. Fourths. So the slope of our radius is minus 3 fourths. Mm -hmm. So what's the slope of our tangent line going to be? 4 thirds. Four thirds. Four thirds. So I'm going to draw a line over here, and that's the slope of the tangent line is going to be 4 thirds. All right. Now we've got the slope. We've got a point. We use our point slope formula. We take y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. What is our y? Well, we're, we'll use 2 because it doesn't really matter. y2, y1, x2, let's use this one. So what do we got? y minus? Negative 3. That's a plus 3. Okay, equals? x. What's our slope? 4 thirds. Four thirds. X, X minus, minus four. Four. 4. Okay, so we do over here. The first thing we do is we multiply it out, right? So we get 4 thirds X minus 16 thirds Y plus 3 equals. What's the next thing we do? Subtract both sides. Subtract what? Three. Subtract the 3. So Y, we're going to minus 3 over here. We do a minus 3 over here. This goes away. Y equals 4 thirds X minus 16 thirds. What is 3 in, if I convert it? So is that a plus or minus? Minus 9 thirds. So Y is equal to 4 thirds X minus 25 thirds. And there is the equation for that line. Yes. Did you? Did everybody follow me? Yes. Okay. Fairly easy to do. So that's if you have the equation of the circle and the point of tangency. To your question, what if you have the center of the circle and the point of tangency? Well, we've sort of already done that, right? Because all we did was we got the circle we got the center of the circle out of the equation, and then we did this. So if, we've, if we're given the center, do we do anything different? No. No. We do the exact same thing. Now let's look at one other example. What if you only know the diameter of a circle and the point of tangency? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's draw that real quick. So we've got a circle, and we have a diameter. There is the diameter, because it goes right through the center. And we have to have what? Actually, we don't even know that yet, do we? We know this point, and we know this point. How do we find the center? Midpoint, midpoint. midpoint formula, which I said we probably wouldn't use, but I'm just bringing this up because that's a quick way to do it. So if you find the midpoint of the circle, and then you know the point of tangency, now you can figure out what the slope of the line is by using the exact same method. Any questions? Yes. 